You're watching Machindo's hometown station, HTV1. Everybody, Brett Boyd from the Market House. Don't miss our new expanded summer hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And don't miss two fantastic deals on ground chuck at just $3.99 a pound or Dutch Farms butter at just $2.99. Just two great deals and two more reasons to come see us at the Market House. Open 8 to 8, seven days a week. We'll see you there. Tired of having everyone know you're coming before you arrive because of your exhaust? If so, then it's time to call the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. RS Custom Exhaust has all the tools and parts to make your vehicle quiet again. And for you sports car enthusiasts, if you're looking for the roar to be the king of the roads, RS Custom Exhaust can help you too. With free estimates and first class service, RS Custom Exhaust has your vehicle covered. So stop and see them today, located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. There's a reason that professionals shop at Jonesville Lumber. They expect quality, service, and knowledge. And that's exactly what they receive. For nearly 100 years, Jonesville Lumber has been family owned. We take pride in serving our area with great products at competitive prices. We have dedicated project estimators in-house that will help figure the materials needed to complete your next task at hand. Whether you're building your dream home, adding a pole barn, building a deck, updating your kitchen, or painting your front door, let Jonesville Lumber help you with your next project. Authentic Mexican food is just a short drive away at El Cerrito in Coldwater and Hillsdale. The variety packed menu has something for everyone with classic Mexican dishes, El Cerrito specialties, and tasty treats for dessert. Don't forget the best margaritas in town with margarita specials Friday and Saturday. And carryout ordering is great for work lunches or picking up dinner for the family. Make your next meal a fiesta for your taste buds at El Cerrito on Chicago Street in downtown Coldwater and Carlton Road in Hillsdale. From Machindo's News Leader, this is HTV1 News at Noon. While the flattening continues and most counties are adding few, if any, new cases in the fight against the novel coronavirus. Well, good afternoon, Machindo. I'm Scott Pienta. Well, the latest numbers show Branch County with 121 cases and two deaths. Hillsdale County holds steady at 170 cases and 24 deaths. And some more good news there. The Hillsdale County Medical Care Facility reports that all residents are either healthy or recovering. And all staff members are back to work with no tests pending for anyone who lives or works there. They say that they're not letting their guard down and it's not the time for a victory lap, but they're calling it, quote, a giant step in the right direction. Well, they're currently working on policies to allow reopening to visitors as soon as possible. Lenawee County reports 153 confirmed cases, 112 recoveries, 4 deaths, 34 probable cases, and 33 of those recovering, and no deaths in the probable category. The state of Michigan now reports that 38,099 people have recovered out of 57,397 cases statewide. There are 83 cases in Steuben County and two deaths. Williams County data was last updated on Friday and that report said that there are 39 confirmed cases, 15 probable cases and one death there. But the state of Ohio says Williams County has one additional case and it's not clear whether it's a confirmed or probable case. We're expecting that answer in today's local update. Fulton County has still has seen a slight increase. Now they're reporting 40 confirmed cases and one probable case with no deaths. The Michigan High School Athletic Association has given, given some indication of how high school sports can get back to, into action. Statement issued Friday says nothing can happen until the stay-at-home order is lifted, which is expected on June 12th. After that, the MHSAA has a three-stage plan to return to activity, but they stress that it's not a timeline of when things can happen. It's an outline of how they should happen. The guidelines recommended screening procedures, limitations on group participation, use of equipment and sanitizing, and more. There are also low, moderate, and high-risk categories for each sport, and each, uh, each sport's ability to return to activity will be judged based on its risks. Now, voluntary remote communication and instruction between coaches and athletes is allowed, including over the summer. 
Local school districts will be making the determinations for each of their sports based on local and state guidelines. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer ex uh, extended last week with a bit of a tease at possibly reopening more of the state's economy. The Associated Press says Whitmer hinted in her Friday press briefing that an announcement could be made in, this, in the coming days about reopening additional areas. The governor said that if the situation continues improving in the six regions currently in phase three, the state will be in a position to take another step forward. Whitmer says that the state's stay-at-home order orders are working, but clarified that it's not the orders that fix the problem, it's the people's response to the orders that do. The governor is expected to testify in front of a Congress this week about Michigan's handling of the pandemic. Now, the U.S. Justice Department recently gave their support to seven businesses who are currently challenging Whitmer's orders in federal court, including a jewelry store right here in Hillsdale. Whitmer says that she's confident that she's stayed within her authority as governor. Meanwhile, the governor Whitmer also calling on federal government for a bailout for K-12 school funding. The Associated Press says Whitmer is attempting to avoid steep cuts that would result, otherwise result from the pandemic. And Budget Director Chris Kolob says that the state won't have the budget ready by the July 1st deadline. That deadline was set by a Republican-backed bill that the governor signed into law in December. The state had received $3 billion in federal money from the coronavirus rescue package, but that cannot be used to make up budget shortfalls. But Midland State Senator Tony Stamus, a Republican, says the legislature knows the scope of the problem and the governor needs to work with them to fix it, adding, quote, waiting on a Hail Mary from Congress is not a plan. The state House and Senate budget committees are calling on the Democratic governor to submit proposed spending re reductions to balance the state budget, which is required by law. Well, meanwhile, the state of Indiana is helping out small businesses who took a hit during the pandemic. The Herald Republican says Indiana Secretary of Commerce Jim Scholiner uh, announced on Friday that $30 million in CARES Act funding will go to a new grant program. Companies with less than 50 employees and less than $5 million in annual revenue will be eligible for up to $10,000 to use for rent, utilities, lease payments, or buying personal protection equipment. Now, those businesses that suffered a revenue loss of at least 40% will get that funding in monthly payments of $2,500. Businesses that suffered at least an 80% revenue loss will get $5,000 per month. Now, $5 million, uh, $5 million of, those th of the $30 million grant funding will specifically be set aside for minority-owned and women-owned businesses. Information on those grants will soon be available at backontrack.in.gov. The Indiana Utility Regulatory Committee is currently considering a request to allow utilities to raise their rates and make up for losses that they took during, that, during the pandemic. WLKI, the commission, uh, for, is currently investigating on how the crisis affected those companies and their customers. Now, the companies making the request include the Duke Energy, Indianapolis Power and Light, Indiana Michigan Power, Northern Indiana Public Service Company, uh, Vectrin, and some smaller utility companies across the Hoosier State. Thousands of customers have already written to the commissioner about to oppose that request. The Office of Utility Consumer Council has also written the commission asking them to extend the state's ban on utility shutoffs beyond the current date of June 30th. How much any rate increases would be is still up to up in the air as a proposal would have an individual company submit their own cases to the commission. Well, we'll be right back with some local event updates plus the ballot issues you'll be looking at the in the near future while well, you're watching HTV1 News at noon. The Saucy Dogs is the name and barbecue is the game. Come on down for a good time and some great food. At Saucy Dogs, try our barbecue nachos or our tasty ribs. We'll have you howling for more. Saucy Dogs, downtown Jonesville. Does your vehicle sound like a tractor putting down the road? Then you need to see the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. They will give you a free estimate along with first class customer service. They custom make any exhaust needed for your vehicle. Stop and see them today located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. Hello everybody, Brett Boyd from the Market House. Don't miss our new expanded summer hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And don't miss two fantastic deals 
on ground chalk at just $3.99 a pound or Dutch Farms butter at just $2.99. Just two great deals and two more reasons to come see us at the Market House. Open 8 to 8, seven days a week. We'll see you there. Well, Blissfield is the latest school to announce their graduation plans. Well, here's how the schedule looks according to the Adrian Daily Telegram. The senior parade will be held June on June 18th at 1 p.m. following a homecoming parade route through town. Now, the public is encouraged to designate uh, design posters, decorate with chalk, and be creative to celebrate the graduates along that parade route. The senior breakfast will take place on July 17th at 9 a.m. in the high school cafeteria and commencement rehearsal will take place at 10 that morning on the football field. The actual commencement ceremony will take place on July 18th at 11 a.m. at the football field. Blissfield High School Principal Christopher Jones says that even though the dates are set, now this could all change if Michendo's, or Michigan's stay-at-home order is extended beyond June 12th. <clears throat> Well, the Bryan Jubilee has officially been canceled this year. So the Bryan Times reports that Bryan Chamber of Commerce Director Dan Uraris uh, confirmed that on Friday. Now, the company that provided the amusement rides for the event has canceled all of their summer engagements, forcing the festival to cancel as well. Now, Uraris says that the chamber had to make the announcement with heavy hearts, but they promised to come back in full force next year. Several other area events made announcements over the weekend. WLKI says Mount Pillar has canceled the 7th annual Bean Days Balloon Fest. Between the pandemic, financial constraints, and no solid plan to enforce social distancing, organizers had no choice but to suspend the event until next year. The Bryant Times says the West Unity Gathering has been postponed. Now that would have been held on June 12th and 13th, but again, Due to the, all the cons, uh, considerations amid the pandemic, organizers decided not to move forward. Now, they hope to possibly reschedule for some time later this year. And the Swanton Enterprise reports that both the Fireworks Fest and Corn Festivals have also been canceled. The Firework Fest had been up in the air for some time, and the company that puts on the show gave the village extra time to make a decision without additional financial penalty. Now, the Swanton Corn Festival organizers say that they could not guarantee public health would remain safe during that event, so they've called it off, but they encourage the community to decorate their homes and businesses to keep up the spirit of the festival alive this year. Well, after a real estate developer failed twice to secure tax credits for the property, the Adrian School District is now putting the former Garfield Elementary School property on the open market. The telegram says a third attempt at the MVAH partnership partners asked for additional concessions from the city commission, but that proposal failed. And a conditional purchase agreement with the developers would have netted the school district $100,000, but Superintendent Bob Benke says that they don't expect a sale, open sale to come anywhere close to that amount. Bids on the property are being taken through June 30th, and Benke says one individual and one business have already shown interest. The property current cost the district $15,000 per year in upkeep. Well, the North Central Local School District will be asking voters for an emergency levy in November. The Bryan Times says that after the regular income tax proposal failed on March's ballot, the North Central Board will vote on the new ballot measure Wednesday. The previous proposal would have put 0.5% taxes on earned income, generating $338,000 per year. Now, this new proposal would be a five-year property tax levy, generating $420,000 per year. North Central currently has the lowest tax burden out of any of the Williams County school districts, about $500 less per year than the most expensive district. Now, that, they've lost about $122,000 for the last two months due to the pandemic-related cuts at, that, at the state level. Even without the pandemic, North Central expected to be about $70,000 in the red at the end of the current fiscal year. Superintendent Will, William Hannock says that all of the new revenue would go into the general fund. The Hillsdale County Board of Commissioners are considering a property tax increase and they're asking for your input tomorrow. 
The proposed increase would raise operating revenues from Ad Valerium property uh, taxes by 2.87% over revenue generated by levies permitted without a hearing. If that millage is not approved, the county's operation, operating revenue will decrease by 0.13% over, over the previous year's revenue. The current operating millage rate is 8.0489 mills. The increase would bring that to 10.3589 mills. A public hearing is taking place at 10 a.m. tomorrow, and you're welcome to attend online. Now, you can join in at webex.com, click on Join, and use meeting number 717-547-344. And the password is 293-329. Now, you can also join uh, by calling on the phone at 408-418-9388 and use the same meeting number. Well, still to come, there's a new house in Archibald that some high school students can be proud of. We'll show you all about it right after this. El Cerrito's variety packed menu has something for everyone. With generous servings and lots of flavor, you'll think of it as a fiesta for your taste buds. Dine in or carry out at El Cerrito on Chicago Street in downtown Coldwater and Carlton Road in Hillsdale. There's a reason that professionals shop at Jonesville Lumber. They expect quality, service, and knowledge. And that's exactly what they receive. For nearly 100 years, Jonesville Lumber has been family owned. We take pride in serving our area with great products at competitive prices. We have dedicated project estimators in-house that will help figure the materials needed to complete your next task at hand. Whether you're building your dream home, adding a pole barn, building a deck, updating your kitchen, or painting your front door, let Jonesville Lumber help you with your next project. The Saucy Dogs is the name, and barbecue is the game. Come on down for a good time and some great food. At Saucy Dogs, try our barbecue nachos or our tasty ribs. We'll have you howling for more. Saucy Dogs, downtown Jonesville. Well, you're looking at the house in Archibald that constru uh, construction trade students from the Fort County Career Center were working on before the pandemic shut down the school. And the Fulton County Expositor says students were able to complete about 65% of the new home, the 83rd new house built by that program. The single-story ranch home has three bedrooms, two full bathrooms, and a half bath, a sunroom, full basement, and two, a two-car garage. FCCC students completed the interior and exterior finishes and drywall finish, low voltage and electrical wiring, and water supply and drainage. The program builds one house each year as part of the Construction Trades High School curriculum. Well, those are today's top stories. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for HTV One News at Noon. Don't forget, you can find more news in our live streams 24-7 at HTV1.net. For all of us here at HTV One, I'm Scott Pianta. Your afternoon. Have a great day, everyone. of having everyone know you're coming before you arrive because of your exhaust? If so, then it's time to call the experts at RS Custom Exhaust in Hillsdale. RS Custom Exhaust has all the tools and parts to make your vehicle quiet again. And for you sports car enthusiasts, if you're looking for the roar to be the king of the roads, RS Custom Exhaust can help you too. With free estimates and first class service, RS Custom Exhaust has your vehicle covered. So stop and see them today, located at 1461 Vera Drive in Hillsdale. Hello everybody, Brett Boyd from the Market House. Don't miss our new expanded summer hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And don't miss two fantastic deals on ground chuck at just $3.99 a pound or Dutch Farms Butter at just $2.99. Just two great deals and two more reasons to come see us at the Market House. Open 8 to 8, seven days a week. We'll see you there.